a lady called an object in the sky in, and uh, the chief and myself went out to check it out, and we saw a bright, a bright white light in the sky before we ever got to her, uh, her location. And uh, we stopped and, and, and watched it. It was like maybe two fingers over the horizon, over the treetop horizon, and appeared to be moving at a very slow pace and it would get brighter and then dimmer, almost like a light turning toward you and then away from you. So we stopped the vehicle and observed it for a few minutes, just, I don't know, two or three minutes, and decided we would try to drive toward it. So we radioed to town down south of us, and uh, I believe their chief was on duty at that time, and he, uh, he confirmed that he saw the object, and it appeared to have some blinking lights on it, like maybe a, a red and green colored lights. A police officer from, uh, uh, Crossville radioed and said that uh, he told us his location and, and said that a large object had flown over him at a fast pace flying in a uh, west and south direction well evidently we were in the path of that object we stopped and got out and looked back toward the east and I saw this object coming over the treetops and it appeared to have kind of a I don't know like a, a white lights on it. They, they weren't actually shining where they were real bright. You could just tell they were on it and, and there was kind of a glow of the lights around it. And uh, I told Junior, I said, there's, I said, there's the object he's talking about. And I said, it appears to be an airplane. And I said, well, uh, I, I said, it's, it's, it don't look exactly like an airplane. It's, it's a, and it kept flying toward us, and it, it flew right straight over our heads, and it was hard to tell what distance, you know, what height it was. Maybe, we, we estimated maybe 1,500 to 2,000 feet, and, and possibly as big as, a, as big as a football field. And it had three, three huge, like, spotlights, kind of triangle shape, with the, with the one being more toward the front. But they were not shining, they weren't shining at the ground, they were like, shining back up on the craft itself. So I asked the chief, I said, cut, cut the car engine off. And like I said, there was no other background noises. The car was dead, you know, we, we shut the engine down, it was dead, and here this big object come flying over. And I mean, if you, you know, put your hands up like this, that's, that's about how big it looked to you. Bigger than a beach ball, you know. That's bigger, bigger. And, uh, we watched it fly over us, and, and then we turned, you know, no sound whatsoever. We watched it go off south and, and west of us. Never a sound. If we'd have been looking down at the ground, we'd have never known it was there. Fred and I uh, pulled over on the side of the road on County Road 43 and stopped our patrol car, shut the engine off, and got out. And at, at that time, the object came directly over uh, our patrol car, and we were looking up underneath it. and. Uh, the, the object appeared to me that it was some 1,000, 1,500 feet higher, had three real bright lights underneath it uh, that were shining not on the ground to illuminate the ground, but shining back up underneath the craft to illuminate the craft itself. And there was some, some lights around what I call the face of the craft or the crown of it, whatever you may call it, uh, appeared looking up through the, the glare of those other lights. Uh, maybe green, blue, or red, or, or some of them might have been white. It was a large craft, and uh, it had no sound whatsoever. It just continued in its, in a, didn't descend or pick up any speed or anything, just a steady speed just right over us and, and went right on out of sight. Sometime after that, now after 89 of February the 10th, we had several calls. Of the night of February the 10th, we had several calls, and they've been scattered reports ever since then. I had a person come in uh, just last night. Uh, Marty Roberts in a Grobo carrier came in, and he described this this object to me and, and drew me a, a diagram of it on a paper, and it was something similar to what I had seen on February the 10th of 89. Uh, and he's seen that this past date. We sent Jeff Cole down there to see if E.T. has a southern accent. They came from outer space. I still believe I saw a UFO. Police were helpless. 
There's nothing that I've ever seen before in my life. And the town of Fife, Alabama, was stunned by the strange visitors. My dog saw it, but he won't talk about it. He went and crawled on the floor, and I know that's what's happened because he, he talks to anybody. <laughs> Fife Police Chief Junior Garmini and Assistant Chief Fred Works got the call and went out to investigate what they figured was some, well, monkey business. Whatever it was they saw, it will be a long time before Fife forgets the things from out of this world. There's some people that's going to ridicule us for it, some people disbelieve it, but I hope them people themselves get to view it one of these days. They may be coming to see you next. There is a legitimate investigation going on down there, if you can believe it. The FAA and the Air Force are doing that investigation. And if any of you Martians are watching this broadcast, please drop by to see us and bring Elvis with you. Straight ahead. We'll get back to reality. What was their reaction to the job they did? Well, they did a job, all right. Uh, they spoofed the incident. They made it to appear like a Keystone Cops kind of a, a program and the people up here didn't like it at all. Uh, they thought they were here in good faith so they showed them the, the southern hospitality and when the program came out they were incensed not just the people in the FAF but the people of the whole area were very very angry at what Inside Edition did. Uh, it was ridiculous. Uh, when Inside Edition came in to do their piece everybody was welcome. Uh, we made them, tried to make them feel at home and to uh, uh, be a part of the community. But after the Inside Edition uh, piece ran on TV, the, the outlook toward the media was completely different. Uh, it, it wasn't hostile, it's just that they didn't get any help. Uh, help was slow in coming. You had to uh, uh, show good faith that what you were doing wasn't going to be like what Inside Edition did. People are still seeing things up here. Uh, they're not as frequent as they were during that time, but there are reports of uh, seeing things in the sky uh, almost constantly. Uh, I don't mean every day, but I mean hardly a week goes by what we don't get some reports of something in the air. 